Let's consider Huntington disease. Huntington is a genetic disease that's caused by an autosomal dominant allele. And so that means that people with that are heterozygous dominant and homozygous, both of these uh, genotypes are affected. And it's only the homozygote recessive that is unaffected. And we know that the incidence of Huntington disease in the general population is approximately 2.7 cases per 100,000 individuals. And so if we define event A as develops Huntington, then the probability of A is 2.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, right? And so that's quite small. However, if we take a random person and we know that one of their parents also developed Huntington disease, let's go ahead and define this as event B, right? B is that a parent had Huntington. And with an incidence of this small, I will note that essentially nobody is homozygous dominant. And so this parent's genotype was almost certainly the heterozygote, big D, little d. And since that is the parent's genotype, then the probability that our randomly selected person whose parent has this genotype develops Huntington is not 2.7 times 10 to the fifth because we have some additional information, right? We now know that this person's probability of developing, developing Huntington is 0 0.5, right? It's 50%. There's a 50% probability that they're going to receive this dominant disease-causing allele from their parent. And so we write this probability, P of A given B, right? And we represent it with this horizontal bar, and that probability is 0 0.5, right? It's 50%, right? The probability that a randomly chosen person develops Huntington, given that their parent had Huntington, isn't 2.7 times 10 to the minus 5, it's 0 0.5. And it is quite a bit different, right? This additional information has changed the probability that this randomly, um, this randomly chosen person will develop this disease. This scenario is pretty straightforward. So let's make things a little more complicated. And this time, let's go ahead and consider breast cancer. Breast cancer is, um, uh, the incidence of breast cancer is about 13%. There's about a 13% chance that a human female will develop breast cancer over their lifetime. However, there are genetic determinants of breast cancer as well. And the best known are probably mutations to the BRCA genes, um, often pronounced BRCA. And so, for example, a dominant mutation to the BRCA1 gene increases a female human's probability from 13% to 50%. And so for ease of discussion, we'll go ahead and call, again, the dominant allele um, big D and the little, um, um, the, the recessive allele little d, right? And so a person who is little d, little d, right, instead of being unaffected, their probability of developing breast cancer is 13%. But if you have one or two alleles um, of the BRCA mutation, your probability of developing breast cancer, if you are female, is 50%. And so let's assume that a heterozygote mother and a homozygote recessive father have a daughter. And let's say that the event A is that this child has the genotype 
the, the, the heterozygous genotype. Right? So our event A is that the child genotype is big D, little d. What is the probability of A? Right. What is the probability of A? Well, basic transmission genetics tells us that the child will receive a little d from their father, but there's a 50% chance that they will receive the disease-causing dominant allele from their mother. And so the probability of A is 0 0.5. However, let's say that the child eventually develops breast cancer. Now we have some additional information, right? If the event B is that the child has breast cancer, then what is the probability that their genotype is heterozygous, heterozygous given this new information, right? What is the probability of A given B? So there are actually two ways to answer this question. And so we're going to take both of them in turn. The first is called the method of natural frequencies. And so let's assume that these um, parents didn't just have one child, they had a hundred child, uh, children. So obviously this is a theoretical experiment instead of a real one. So if they have a hundred children, then 50 of those children are going to have the, geno the heterozygous genotype, and 50 of those children are going to be homozygous recessive. Of the 50 that have uh, that have the heterozygote genotype, we know that 50% of them will develop breast cancer, right? So 25 will have breast cancer and 25 will not. And of the 50 children that are homozygous recessive, 12 or 13% of these children will eventually develop breast cancer. And so here, that's only six develop breast cancer, and uh, 25 minus 6 is 19, do not. And so the probability of an affected, in that, an, that an affected individual has this genotype is simply the proportion of affected individuals with that genotype, right? The number of affected individuals is 25 plus 6, right? So there are 31 individuals that have breast cancer, and of those 31 individuals, 25 of them are the heterozygote, and so 25 over 31 is approximately 80%, and so the probability of A given B, the probability that the child is a heterozygote given the fact that the child develops breast cancer eventually, is 0 0.8. Once we learned more information about the situation, that additional information changed our probabilities. We call the initial information, the probabilities, just about transmission, just about incidence, we call these priors. And we call the conditional probability that we get once we use all of that information together, we call this a posterior or a posterior probability. And posteriors are what you get when you update your priors with new information, right? And so you can often construct this kind of hypothetical population, like the 100 children. But there's a formal way to go straight from your priors to your uh, posterior probabilities. So let's clean this up, and then we'll talk about Bayes' theorem.